It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. God, what a day to be a church. What a day to feel his spirit. What a day to come to magnify my king. What a day to lift up the name, the only name that saves us. What a day, what a day. What a day of rejoicing it's going to be when we walk on streets of gold. What a day it's going to be when we don't go home. What a day it's going to be when I'm not worried about lunch, but I'm just lifting up that name forever and ever. What a day of rejoicing that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look on that face, the one that saved me, that brought me out of darkness, that took me out of the miry clay, that gave me his name and placed it on me in baptism. What a day that will be. Welcome to church. Welcome to the day that God made for us. Welcome to a day in his spirit. Oh, welcome to it. I'm, I'm excited. I don't know about you. I've got to calm down. Okay. Welcome to church, everybody. Please join me in prayer. Let's pray for the service. Jesus, we thank you. Praise you, glorify your name, hallelujah, you're worthy. My God, let us be in one heart, in unity, my God of the Spirit, in unity of purpose, to serve you, to worship you, to be led by the Spirit today, my God, and see you do a work today in this place. We praise you, love you, thank you. Ask it in Jesus' name. Shake somebody's hand and tell them it's a day, and what a day it is. Praise God. Invite somebody to shop around. Mm -hmm. 
If you love what you feel in this room, would you lift your voice one more time with me and clap your hands unto the Lord right now. Come on, if the Lord's ever brought you through anything, if the Lord's ever been good to you, I'm not going to push you, but if the Lord's ever been good to you, you ought to just, you've got a right to lift your voice. You've got a right to clap your hands. You've got a right to tell him how good he is. Amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I know that's a simple phrase, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus, you see, I was, I was, 
I was in a bad place, and we've all been in bad places at times, but Jesus always reaches further down than I think he can and picks me up out of my bad place, and he changes me. He makes me whole. He makes me new. He gives me the strength that I need. Amen. Aren't you thankful this morning for the power of the Lord? Amen. Look to your neighbor right now, and I want you to tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for coming to the house of the Lord this morning. And if you've got a need this morning, uh, you came here dealing with something, you came here uh, with an issue, a problem, a question, you came to the right house. You came to the right place because Jesus is here and Jesus wants to touch you. Jesus wants to help you. Jesus wants to work for you in all your needs and problems. So with that being said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer for our needs this morning. Who has faith in the house today? I see the hands lifted up and I can tell I know you and I believe in the power of your prayers I believe in your faith, and I believe that when we unify together, the needs that you have are going to be met in this place this morning. I speak that right now. Amen. And I, I just wonder, uh, before I mention these needs, whatever needs you have, I don't want you to feel afraid or hesitant to bring that need before the Lord. Because it doesn't matter what needs you have, what you're dealing with, there is nothing too big for our God to do. There's nothing too complex. There's no problem too complex for our God to work out. And he's going to use your faith to do it. Amen. He's going to use your faith to work out your problem this morning. Amen. We're going to pray this morning for Sister Betty Shields, a precious elder in our church. We love her. We want to pray for her health. We want to pray for our life recovery uh, ministry that's going on in this church. There are individuals who are, are coming into this church and they're being delivered. God is working for them. He's helping them get back to where he wants them to be. Amen. And they are important. We need them in the church. Amen. Sister Heather McLean, we want to remember her. We want to remember her family. We want to remember the city of Iuka. Amen. We want to remember our nation, the United States of America. We want to remember Bishop Doug White and Sister White this morning. Our pastor and first lady, we want to remember them as well, that God would give them wisdom and direction and protection and strength in this time of revival. We want to remember, uh, we want to pray for continued revival in this city, in this tri-state area. Uh, there is territory that we are taking right now as we speak uh, across this area. Amen. We're going to pray together, though. I'm asking you to take your need and take your faith and unify with me. Lift your hands with me right now, if you would. And let's unify together in prayer. Lord God, uh, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us uh, to come into your house. Uh, it's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by eloquent speech that prayers are answered. But it's by your spirit. Uh, and it's by your hand of anointing uh, that answers prayers. Uh, Lord, you see every need on this list. And I'm asking that you would touch and minister. We pray for our pastor and first lady this morning uh, that you would cover them and strengthen them. Uh, I pray for every need in this place. Uh, we loose the gift of faith to operate right now uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we lose healing. We lose miracles uh, in this place. Uh, we bind every sickness and every disease. Uh, we bind all confusion in this house. Uh, and I pray, Lord, uh, oh, that as the song begins to play, Oh, that we would feel an urgency to pray unto you. That we would feel a trust in you. And that we would know that you're working all things for good for us. Lord, we pray this with our hearts set upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you proclaim that with a hand clap of praise right now?
Come on, that's good. That's good. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing for us. We thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for moving, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you would, if you feel comfortable, I urge you to come to the front with your need, and the ministry team will be glad to pray for you this morning. Let's worship with a praise team as they come back. Just something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about. Your name is 
No other name that's going to save me. No other name to worship. There's no other name that I call on when I'm in pain. There's no other name I call on when I have a need. I, I'm, I mean, my wife might be in the house, but I'm talking to Jesus first, y'all, because he's, he's the one that can meet the need. If we could get the ushers, please. And if you've got a financial need, he's the one that can meet it, amen. And he's got the best savings plan in the world. I'm telling you what, the return on tithes and offering. Stock market can't beat it, y'all. Bitcoin can't beat it. Amen. You just you can't you can't beat it. Amen. If you would join us in prayer, lift up your voices and pray with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a giver. I bring my tithes and offerings a day into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an oath of heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out. All that I do shall prosper in Jesus' name. Give as the Lord has blessed you in Jesus' name. This moment now, here in this place I stand. To you I pledge my life, to you I lift my hands. You opened up my eyes, I am forever changed. I cannot stop this far, I'll never be the same.
he's a worthy God, can you give him worthy praise? I said, if he is a worthy God, can you give him worthy praise? Praise that he is worthy of. If he lifted you, can you lift him? If he blessed you, can you bless him? If he touched you, can you touch him? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Great to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. You can be seated momentarily. What a privilege it is to gather together on this Sunday morning. I don't want to take, I don't want to take for uh, granted the opportunity to be with you in service today. I don't want to take for granted the opportunity to lift up the name of the Lord. We are thankful for the blessings of the Lord. We're thankful for the touch of the Holy Ghost even on this Sunday morning. I wonder today, are you glad that when you come to the house of the Lord, you can feel the presence of the Lord in the place? If anything, I want to loose the power of the Holy Ghost to move as it needs to in this service. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not every atmosphere that you go that people are okay with the move of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm meddling this morning already. Not every place that you go is okay with folks talking in tongues. Not every place that you go, that folks are okay with you lifting up your voice and magnifying the Lord. Some things needs to be as quiet as a funeral home. Some things that needs to be as dead as a graveyard. But I'm here to tell you, my God is alive and well today, and I come to magnify Him. I come to lift my voice. He lifted me. He brought me out of darkness into marvelous light that I could show forth His praise. Is anybody thankful from where God brought you from today? and his intentions of blessing your life and encouraging you and ministering to you today. Praise the name of the Lord. So thankful for all of you today. And that God's blessed this week tremendously, and we are sure thankful for it. Now, progress has been made, and we are thankful for all the men and their manpower that they have expended for the sake of the project that's ongoing out back. And I encourage you not necessarily walking out onto the site. There are still some dangers in that. But still, I would encourage you walk around back, take a look around. Uh, somebody the other day I was talking to said, um, originally when the slab was here, uh, I told somebody, folks really don't have a clue until that building shows up out there of the magnitude of what God is doing out back right now. And uh, I showed a picture to somebody the other day, which the picture really doesn't justice either. I said, but I got to zoom up and show you something. They said, what's that? I said, there's actually a man standing in this building. And I zoomed up on it, and they go, whoa, that's a big building. Hallelujah. Said, yes, sir. It's a big building. God's doing big things, and we are thankful for it. Thank you all for your sacrifice and investments. This has been a great weekend. Yesterday, uh, we had two endeavors downtown with uh, the events that were going on at the market and also at our Veterans Day Parade yesterday. Thank you for all of those who helped out with that. Made it such a great day yesterday. The coffee shop was covered up. Those were at Divine and Books and Boutique was there. Sister Erica had her uh, boutique there. And I asked all, and they all said it all went tremendous yesterday. And we are thankful for those efforts. I do want to take just a moment this morning and to honor great men who have done great things. And we are thankful for their sacrifice so I want to ask if you've ever served in any capacity in military, if you would stand right now, whether you're active duty now or whether you have been active duty in the past, we'd ask you if you would to stand, men and women across the house right now. I wonder, can we take just a moment and give them a hand of appreciation for their sacrifice, for their investments, for their endeavors? Thank you so much. We appreciate greatly. Let me say that again. We appreciate greatly your endeavors. Thank you so much. You can be seated this morning. God bless each of you. And uh, with that, yesterday evening, great time of fellowship. I showed up at the youth, uh, youth gathering yesterday afternoon. And uh, friends, whatever it was, friends, what? Friends giving. Amen. That's awesome. And we had a number of guests that were at Friendsgiving last night. I think I counted at least five guests that were there, and I want to encourage our young people. You're doing a great job of bringing people into a 
a very good environment to be involved and connected to, and thank you for doing that. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, too, a lot of things are upcoming in the near future. How many realize that not only Thanksgiving is two weeks away, am I right, two weeks away, two weeks away, two weeks away. I'm old. It's slipping by fast. Uh, but with that, not only is Thanksgiving around the corner, Christmas is falling right behind it. Amen. And it's coming on fast. Some of you drew up when I said that, thinking, oh, my Lord, I haven't got anything bought for Christmas yet. We understand how that goes. But uh, with that, please be in prayer this week. Somebody say this week. This week kicks off our portion of the project out back. And a lot of our men and those that will be helping with that will be involved in the process of carrying this to the next level. And we don't have a very, very long window to get that taken care of. We actually have two projects that's going on right now, one out back and one that's fixed to kick off in the fellowship hall. And uh, we've got great men that will be involved with all that. But I would ask you, please be in prayer for them for not only their safety, but God would give them direction that we need specific things done. We don't need to go forward and back up two steps. We need to go forward and see this thing progress in Jesus' name. Do want to say thank you also to our men yesterday that worked successfully without falling out of the ceiling. Hallelujah. They got, <laughs> they got uh, uh, the security wiring and all that stuff going on, upgrades for it, and we are sure thankful for all of them. But I am sure thankful when I come in this house that the Lord is here to minister to needs on this great Sunday morning. We're in prayer for Brother Lawrence Delaney, uh, who is sick this morning and not feeling well. Also, Brother Tarazas. Uh, who is at home, and we miss all of our folks when they're away and not able to be here. I'm glad to hear uh, that Caleb is doing better. We've been praying for him this week, but I believe the good Lord is not through with this service this morning. Is there anybody else expecting God to do even greater things this morning and the rest of this service today? If that's your heart to see God do great things, I wish you'd get on your feet right now. I wish you'd lift your hands and ask the great God that we serve to minister in the continuance of this service. Wonderful Savior, we are so thankful today for your touch, your word, and your timing. Today, our hearts are open to receive of what you would say. Where Our hearts are open today, God, to receive of what you would do in this service today. We clap with our hands and give you glory and praise and honor. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. While you remain standing, it's by divine timing today that Brother Jesse Scroggins will come and deliver the word of the Lord. It's been a few days ago now that I really felt, kept feeling the tug of the Holy Ghost to say, call Brother Jesse. You need to have him to preach. And as I was fixing to call or text, Brother Scroggins texted me. And he said, Pastor, I don't have to preach at any time, but just know. The Lord has given me a word. I said, thank you, Brother Jesse, for divine timing. I was fixing to call you. And the Lord has a word for somebody in this house today. I just ask you to open your heart and receive what the Lord would have for you today. Would you give this man of God a great hand of appreciation? Brother Scroggins, as you come, take your liberty today. We sure do love you. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands unto the Lord right now and begin to pray. Come on, can you usher in his spirit right now? Come on, if you've got the Holy Ghost, why don't you usher in his spirit right now? Let's not just play around with it. Let's not be easy with it, but come on, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want you to enter this place right now, God. We want your spirit. We want your power. I tell you what, why don't we activate what Pastor preached on Wednesday night so eloquently? Why don't you lay your hand on your neighbor right now, your brother, your sister, if it's appropriate, and let unity work in this house right now in the name of Jesus. Find just somebody right now to connect with and begin to pour out. Come on, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. Let His Spirit move in this place. In the name of Jesus, come on, there's a need being met right now. Right now. Right now.
What a beautiful Sunday morning to be in the house of the Lord. I give each one of you honor. I know you're standing. I don't want to take too much time while you're standing. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be reading the book of Acts chapter 26. I give honor, the highest honor I possibly can to our great pastor and pastor's wife. I am so thankful. And I just, I know that I can hand this mic to every person in this church and and we can all just tell about how thankful we are for brother and sister Lambert. The vision that God's given them, not only the vision, but the drive. Amen. I'm thankful to have a pastor and a pastor's wife that didn't just receive what God wants to do and is waiting on God to do it. But we've got a pastor and a pastor's wife that's actively praying and doing whatever they can and driving the vision that God's given and saying, God, whatever you need us to do. How many is thankful for that? We don't need to take that for granted. There's some out there that's just looking for a salary and a paycheck. There's some that's just that's hired to, to watch the sheep, but I'm thankful that we've got a shepherd at Iuka First United Pentecostal Church that says, God, whatever you need for revival. Amen. I'm thankful for it. I give honor to each and every one of you. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, thank you for being here today. My wife, who is uh, downstairs teaching Sunday school, uh, you'd probably be blessed to have her instead of I, but it's just not how it, it went today. But I give honor to her and my two beautiful baby boys. I also want to say a, a big happy birthday to my sister today. It is Virginia's birthday. I want to say happy birthday. So proud of her and each and every one of you. Amen. Acts chapter 26, when we start at verse 25. Uh, as pastor said, I do believe that God's placed something in, inside of me for this service and for this church. And, uh, and I don't want you to say it's for a certain individual, or for a certain age group. Amen. I believe that God wants to speak today to Iuka First United Pentecostal Church. I believe God wants to speak to you. Can, can you just say this is my word today? Look at your neighbor and say, matter of fact, this is your word today. Find just somebody else and convince them. Say, this is your word today. Acts chapter 26, starting at verse 25. It says, but he said, and this is, this is Paul speaking. This is when he went uh, before Agrippa. Uh, and, and Paul asked and, and requested this, knowing that he would not be granted freedom. But Paul said, if I can just get and state my case, he said, I believe that I could convert somebody. See, that's the mentality that we need to have. Paul said, I don't even care if this works out for my good. I just want to do it so that maybe I can make somebody a Christian. Amen. But Paul, it says, but he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king, he's talking about Agrippa, for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. See, Agrippa had some Jewish background. He said, I'm persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. And Paul says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. And then Agrippa said, one translation, it says that Agrippa uh, 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 interrupted Paul and said, almost... Thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Agrippa told Paul, I believe we've got the greatest pastor in all of the world, but Agrippa told Paul, such a powerful man of God, a church planner, a servant, an apostle, he told Paul, he said, you almost done it. You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Verse 29, the last verse that we'll read, it says, And Paul said, I would to God, Agrippa, that not, not only thou, but also, also all that hear me this day, that we're both almost and all together such as I am except these bonds. Paul said to Agrippa, it's not enough that you're almost persuaded, but I would that everyone that would hear my voice today not just be almost, but also be all together. What I am, I wish, oh, today, that everyone I speak to in this place today, that we would not settle for almost persuaded and 
almost right and almost living for God, but that every one of us would be almost and all together persuaded and sold out and living for God. Why don't you lift your hands and begin to pray unto the Lord right now? Hallelujah. You may be seated today, but I, I request, please, 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 please uh, activate your Holy Ghost. God can pull around as much as he wants today. Amen. God has the power and the ability, but if it doesn't fall on a receiving church, then we're just going to have another fellowship and we're going to go home and eat a good lunch. We need to activate. Today, I want to preach what I believe the Lord wants to say the title would be Sundays Without Gates. Sundays Without Gates. I believe that uh, that revelation will come. If you have already know what I'm preaching, if, if you've already figured it out, just hang tight. Please don't be thinking about what you're going to eat at the restaurant or whatever. Uh, but let's have a good move in the Holy Ghost today. I want to tell this church again that right now in this time that we are in, we have zero time for almost right now in the moment that we live in and in the time that we live in there is no opportunity for us to be almost I would speak from the youngest person and to the oldest that every person whether you be preacher or preacher spouse whether you be a preacher's kid or a musician or a singer in the choir maybe you teach Sunday school or work the parking lot whatever you do and wherever you are I would say that right now is not the time to be almost if you're on the fringe I would say today you need to step in if you're watching online I would say today you need to come to church if you've been thinking about doing something for God I would tell you to do it if you've been thinking about living holy I would tell you to do it today because we have no time to be almost persuaded we have no time to be almost used of God we have no time anymore to be almost, almost will not make it to heaven. Almost will not let you see those pearly gates. Almost will not put you on streets of gold. Hey, if you make it almost, let me tell you, you have not made it. If you're almost saved, you're not saved. If you're almost delivered, you're not delivered. If you're almost living right, I've got something to say. You're not living right. Today, I want to shatter that word of almost. And I preach today because I believe that God wants to restore apostolic authority and revival unprecedented. And to have apostolic authority, let me tell you, you've got to be apostolic and you've got to have authority. You can't have apostolic authority if you're not willing to take authority. So today I take authority and say that it is not the time for almost. Almost won't get you there. My son, I love him to death, and guess what? He almost listens to me all the time. You know what that means, parents? He don't listen to me. We cannot be almost. In the book of Nehemiah, we read, and it tells the story of Israel being exiled, and uh, Nehemiah, he, he's been exiled, and he's in the palace at Shushan. And uh, Nehemiah, there's some that come uh, uh, from Israel and come and, and meet Nehemiah there. And one, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, it's uh, Hanani, Hanani, something like that. We'll call him Han. He, he's, amen. He, he's dead and gone. He was a good man. But Nehemiah asked him, he, say, he asked about those that escaped and are in Jerusalem. And... Uh, and he begins to tell Nehemiah, and he says, the remnant. Somebody say, the remnant. The remnant. He says, the remnant are in great affliction. 
the walls of Jerusalem are broken down. And he goes further to say, and the gates are burned. And Nehemiah gets burdened with this, that the remnant are afflicted. See, you will have revival and God will work when you get uh, uh, burdened for the remnant. When you decide, just as Pastor preached a week ago, when you decide that I'm going to be a keeper of the remnant, that's when God will start to piece things together and use you. But Nehemiah's burden now about this, that he heard that the remnant are in great affliction and the walls are broken down and the gates have been burned. And he asked the king, he says, if I can just go back and build these walls back, uh, I, I don't want to, to take anything and I'm not trying to disrespect you, but I just want to go. And he gets permission and he goes into Jerusalem. And as Nehemiah gets to Jerusalem and he's looking around and he's uh, assessing the damage and he's, he's going to each wall and each place where there was a gate and he's, he's burdened and he's heavy in his heart because of what he sees in God's city, what he sees in Jerusalem. And while he's there, there's some named Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem that came up to him and, and was asking, what are you doing here? You see, Sanballat... He was uh, a Horonite. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly as well. And Tobiah, an Ammonite, and Geshem, an Arabian. And, and they were in Jerusalem, and they, they, they came to Nehemiah. What are you doing? What's going on? Why are you even here? And Nehemiah just began to tell them that God placed them in Jerusalem to rebuild these walls and, and to build Jerusalem back up. And Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Geshem uh, began laughing at Nehemiah and saying, no, that, that, that's not going to happen. That's, that's funny, but no, Nehemiah, you're not going to rebuild Jerusalem. You're not going to rebuild the walls. Uh, and Nehemiah, you know what? Nehemiah stands up and says, I like Nehemiah. He's a good guy. We need to be more like Nehemiah. He stands up and he says, look, you can laugh all you want to. But I'm going to build these walls back up because God commissioned me to build back these walls. And he said, matter of fact, Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Geshem, you have no portion, you have no right, and you have no memorial in Jerusalem. It's time for the children of God to stand up and tell all those things that you've been dealing with. Look, I'm building the walls back, and you have no portion, you have no right, and you have no memorial amen they, they weren't Israelites they weren't Israelites Nehemiah said you've been here a little too long but you don't belong here Nehemiah said, look, the, the children of Israel, they've dealt with you for a little bit too long, Sanballat, but you don't belong here anymore. You don't have place anymore. And what would it be right now in November of 2021 if there was somebody that would say, look, I've dealt with addiction for a little too long, but addiction doesn't belong here. I've dealt with fornication for a little too long, but fornication don't belong here. I've dealt with perversion or pornography for a little too long. But perversion and pornography doesn't belong here. Oh, I'm here to declare that almost isn't good enough and it doesn't belong in the city. It has no portion in the city. It's time that we stood up and declared that it has no portion no right and no memorial. Amen. You are going to see things happen when you finally stand up and quit waiting on God to clean your life up. I'm just going to be real with you this morning. When you decide I'm going to quit waiting on God to clean me up and you start talking to that sin and saying, look, you don't belong here. And uh, fathers, mothers, if you walk around your house and saying, look, that spirit doesn't belong here. Hey, holiness belongs here. And if it ain't holy, it has no place. Holiness belongs here. Anointing belongs here. Godliness belongs here. And if it doesn't fit the bill, it's not welcome. It's time today for us to get rid of the almost. Amen. So we read down further in the book of Nehemiah. You see, they laughed when Nehemiah said, I'm going to build these walls. 
And now here the walls are being built. The project's going forth. And it was made in record time, the Bible says. And the walls are being built. And then Sam Ballot sees the walls are being built. And Sam Ballot gets mad. And he starts mocking the Jews. And he's mad. And he's saying all of these things. And you know what Tobiah says? Tobiah says, Sam Ballot, you just need to calm down. Look, they're building the walls. He said, but watch. Even if a fox gets on those walls, those walls are going to be broken down. See, Tobiah had already been here. He said, look, Sanballat, I remember when Jerusalem had walls, and look at it now. Don't get too worried about them trying to build those walls. It ain't going to happen. You just let a fox get up there. It's going to break it down. Tobiah was not concerned uh, by the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, Tobiah was thinking, you can let them build those walls all day, but that's not stopping our agenda. Tobiah was saying, you can let them build those walls, Sanballat. Don't say anything. Don't even worry about them uh, because it's just going to be like before and so so, so uh, Tobiah had said this to Sanballat and then we read further when the walls are now complete and Nehemiah says I, I built the walls and they were complete but I had not yet hung the gates I had not finished the doors I had not finished the gates and at this moment, you see, Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, they laughed when Nehemiah said that he would build the walls. And then when the project was going forth and it looked like the walls were going to be built, Sanballat was mad and he mocked the Jews, but Tobiah was not concerned with the walls. But at this, point, at this moment now that the walls are completed and now that the walls are built and now that the walls are put in place and just the only thing that lacks is hanging the gates now it's when Sam Ballot and those terrible three they begin to send messengers unto Nehemiah and they say look why don't you just stop and meet us down here in this in this field at oh no why don't you just meet us Nehemiah just wait for a moment what you're doing I know you built the walls and you're about to hang the gates but Nehemiah meet us in oh no and let us talk and Nehemiah said I knew that they meant mischief and they meant trouble for me so I told them I cannot come down he said I'm doing a great work and I cannot come he said why should the work stop so I can meet and talk to you come on there's somebody that needs to tell that thing that's been speaking to you I'm not going to stop building the walls I'm not going to stop doing the work I'm not going to stop living holy why should I stop having revival for your unholy self? Why should I stop, stop having revival for someone that doesn't even have portion? So Nehemiah tells him, look, I'm not meeting you. No, no. I'm not even going there. That's not what God wants. That's not what I want. That's not what this project needs. That's not what God's people needs. That's not what revival needs. He said, I'm not going. They sent four times, four times. Come on, Nehemiah, let us go to oh no, let's talk. Let us talk, let us talk, Nehemiah. Let us talk, let us talk, let us talk, Nehemiah. Just come on, Nehemiah. Just come down to oh no. And Nehemiah says, each time I answered them the same way. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. You see, there's going to be spirits that test your consistency. Because Sunday I live for God. And they're going to come knocking on your door on Monday morning. And they're going to see, I wonder if he's still going to live for God. <laughs> on Monday you came to prayer meeting and you got saved. And then Tuesday morning they're going to come at your door. And see, I wonder if she'll still be holy. Or maybe she'll listen to a little music. Maybe she'll do a little thing. Maybe she'll live a little unholy. Maybe he'll get a little unright. There's devils that will test your consistency. And see if the answer's still today what it was yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, but Nehemiah, you need to have some consistency about yourself to say, I'll live holy on Sunday. I'll live holy on Monday. I'll live holy on Tuesday. It's not time to be almost. Amen. So he, they sent four times and they got the same answer each time. You know what, you know what they done the fifth time? They, they, they came and they lied on him. They said, look, Look, Nehemiah, we're going to go tell the king that you're trying to build this city and you're trying to make yourself this and you're trying to do that 
and they begin to lie on him and say, look, we know this is what you're trying to do, and this is what the king said. Matter of fact, they got people to speak bad about it. They got people to speak against it, and they got all these lies built against them. Just like some of you, you got all these lies and all these rumors built to you. You've got all these lies in your mind from unholy spirits telling you that you can't be used, and you can't be holy, and you can't live for God, and you can't be anointed. But Nehemiah said, you know what you say isn't true. You know what you say isn't right. But that's okay because the walls are built and the gates are about to be hung and you still have no portion. Amen. Nehemiah for the fifth time says, I'm going to keep building. I'm not going to let your lie stop me. I'm not going to let it stop what God wants to do, but I'm going to keep building. See, again, they laughed at first. They laughed when Nehemiah said that he would build the walls, and then they got mad and they mocked when the walls started being built. But they did not become violent until the gates were about to be hung. They lied and they got mad and they, they, they laughed at all these things. But then, then when the gates, when the gates were built and they were getting ready to place them on the walls, so they saw the walls and they were mad about it. But they got violent and they 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 meant for evil and they meant for destruction when the gates were about to be hung. You see, because they knew that the walls would be an inconvenience to them, but they knew that gates would be their destruction. They knew their walls would be difficult, but their gates would be impossible. They knew their walls, they knew their walls would keep them on the edge from time to time, but they knew their gates would keep them out. See, Tobiah was mad because he knew as long as Jerusalem has walls, uh, you see the priests of Jerusalem when the walls were broken, uh, Tobiah and him got friendly uh, and the priests started letting Tobiah in the temple uh, and started letting Tobiah in the storeroom uh, and Tobiah knew uh, even if there's walls, uh, I've still got access to what's not mine. Uh, even when there's walls, uh, I've still got access to what belongs to God. Uh, but when the gates are hung, uh, when they put the gates on, I'll no longer have access to what doesn't belong to me and what belongs to God. You see, they knew I can have access with walls, but I have no portion with gates. They knew if there was somebody that would put the walls, it would be tough for them. But they knew if somebody would hang the gates, then Jerusalem would be powerful again. They knew that if there were walls, that they would one day infiltrate it again. But if somebody... Just hung the gates. Why don't you lift your hands right now and let God's spirit move in this place. Come on, it's I, I, you could, It's time for you to hang the gate. It's time for you to hang the gates. It's time for you to hang the gates. Yo Hallelujah. It's time for you to hang the gate. You see, all day long you can say, to buy you have no portion. To buy you're not welcome in what belongs to God. And all day long you can proclaim those things. All day long you can tell yourself that you got to be holy. And you can tell that spirit that you've been dealing with that I'm going to be holy. But until you hang the gates, they will always have a portion. Today I bring the word of the Lord that I believe that God placed preaching to you Sundays without gates. Because there's those that come to church every Sunday 
And there's those that come to prayer meeting. And there's that may even come to pre-service prayer. And they've got these walls that look so good. They've got these walls that they built and put back together. But there are Sundays without gates. There are those that come to every function. And they come to every meeting. And they come to every dinner. And they show up when others might not. But yet they are still Sundays without gates. They've hung the walls. Oh, and their walls sure do look good. They sure look like they're living holy. And they sure look like they're living right. And they know the right prayer to pray and they know the right time to clap and the right time to jump but there's Sundays without gates they're just walls it's just a city built of walls without gates they look good man they look good matter of fact their walls might be taller than some but there's no gates there's no protection there's no protection. There's no gates. If we're not careful, we can become Sundays without gates. We can become so satisfied in our walls and we can become so content in building our walls that we forget to hang the gates. But what's the importance of the gates? What, why, why should I hang gates? Why should I not be a Sunday without gates? You see in Nehemiah... We read and we, we hear all these things about Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem after or, or before while they're building the walls. But you know what? When the gates were hung uh, in Jerusalem, you know the Bible barely even mentions Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem anymore. Matter of fact, the only time is two times in Nehemiah 13 uh, when the Bible reveals that Tobiah was sneaking in the storeroom of the temple because the priests have gave, given them the access and option. Uh, and then we read another time uh, when uh, Nehemiah ran Sambalat's uh, grandson out of Jerusalem because he didn't belong. Those are the only two times we read again in Nehemiah about Sambalat and Tobiah. Why? Because Nehemiah hung the gates. Why don't you hear about them anymore? Why don't you hear about them trying to kill God's people anymore it's because there were gates you'll stop dealing with it when you decide to hang the gates you'll stop hearing it once you decide to hang the gates hallelujah, hallelujah. so then we, we go on to read and we see in Nehemiah chapter 8, the walls have been built and the gates have been hung. And what do they do? They go to the man of God. They say, Ezra, we need you. We need you, Ezra. Come on. We want to read the book of law. And Ezra stands up before the water gate of Jerusalem and reads the book of law. And, and what's the significance of that? I, I believe it would go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 that we just love so much in a, in a gospel that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and all thy might. And these words which I speak and which I command shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt diligently teach them unto thy children and should talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise you should talk about them and matter of fact you should go further and you should uh, uh, hang them on your hand uh, as a sign uh, you should hang them on your hand they should be as frontlets between thine eyes and the Bible then goes to say matter of fact you need to go further and you need to write it on the post of the house and on thy gates you see it's the gates that carry the gospel it's it's the gates uh, that carried the blood uh, during the last plague. Uh, and without gates, uh, you can't have gospel. Uh, and without gates, uh, you can't have blood. We go further. What's the importance of gates in my world? See, there was a city in the book of Jeremiah city called Hazar. Some of you may have read this before. It was a wealthy nation. In the Bible, God says in Jeremiah chapter 49, it says it was a wealthy nation without care, which have neither gates 
nor bars and God begins to say I'm going to destroy that city I'm going to scatter everything that they have and their spoil is going to come to you I'm going to get rid of that city and he goes on to say I'm not only getting rid of the inhabitants right now but that city that's a wealthy nation Hazar it's a wealthy nation without care which have neither gates nor bars not only am I going to scatter their existence but that place will forever uh, remain desolate uh, and nobody uh, will ever go there again. You see, Hazar, it was set up. It was set up in a place of trade. It was set up in a place of prosperity. It was near Egypt, and it was near the Mediterranean Sea. And Hazar was the largest Israelite city And during biblical times. It says it is ten times, was ten times larger than Jerusalem. And matter of fact, when you look at the name of Hazar, protected by ramparts and if you know what ramparts are it means defensive walls with walkways on top you see Hazar it was protected by the greatest walls that you could build it was protected by the greatest foundation of walls but there was one downfall there were why you see today you can look it up that to this moment uh, while I'm preaching uh, and I use the first United Pentecostal church uh, there's a city over in Israel uh, called Hazar uh, and you know there's not one person there's not one individual that lives in Hazar it is to this day an archaeological dig, dig site Nobody lives there. But what's the difference? They had walls. They had walls. They had walls. But they had no gates. They were ten times the size of Jerusalem. And they were bigger than Jerusalem. And they were more wealthy than Jerusalem. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what status you have. I don't care what position you have. You're nothing without gates. trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to make you upset. But let me tell somebody in 2021, your bank account means nothing. Your job means nothing. Your status means nothing. Your position means nothing. You've got to have gates. Hazar destroyed. He shot Oh, in the name of Jesus, Hazar was destroyed because the difference was there were no gates. There were no gates. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 19 says, The evil bow before the good. You know what the word of the Lord says? The evil bow before the good and the wicked at the gate of the righteous. The word says that because God didn't want you to just be focused. He, he could have said they bow at the wall of the righteous, but God doesn't want you to just have walls. You need walls. But God said the wicked bow at the gate of the righteous. In Isaiah, in Isaiah we get the passage where it says, I've set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which they, they, they will never have peace day nor night. They'll always be watching. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey them that have rule over you, for they watch over your souls. I'm so thankful again for our pastor and pastor's wife. We've got the absolute best pastor and pastor's wife. Do you know another name for them is watchmen? They're the watchmen on our walls. You know they watch over your soul. You know that? You know whether you, you believe it or not, you know they pray for you. You know they love you. And I would go on to say that if you don't feel that, then you need the Holy Ghost. I'm just being honest. 
They're the watchmen on the walls for you. But you want to know something? When the watchmen see something coming towards the city, he says, look out! Look out, there's something coming that's going to destroy your family. You got to close the gates. And then you look at the watchman and say, sorry, sir, but I just never hung the gates. The watchman can make the warning all day and can tell you you got to shut the door and you got to make preparation because there's a lion. There's something out here trying to destroy you and your family. But you're going to have to look back and say, I never even hung the gates. I was satisfied with the walls. And I was a Sunday without gates. Listen, I would never say this negative of my man of God. Uh, you would never hear me say one thing against him ever in my life. I would never. Uh, but our pastor uh, is useless in your world. Uh, in your world. Uh, the watchman is useless in your world. Uh, when you decide uh, that you're not going to hang the gates. Uh, your pastor uh, is useless in your family. Oh, you know what you do? You say, Pastor, I love you, and I'm so glad to hear you preach, but I don't want you to be my watchman. You know what happens, moms and dads, uh, when you go home and you say, I just don't think that pastor hit it on the nail today. Uh, And when you say, I just wish pastor would let go of that standard today. Uh, When you get home and you sit around your dinner table uh, and you say, I know that pastor said you don't need a date by yourself uh, and you don't need to be in that vehicle by yourself uh, with that person that's not your spouse uh, and the opposite sex. Uh, You're saying, Pastor, uh, I want to be a Sunday But I don't want gates. You know what happens, moms, when you tell your baby girl, look, I know the skirt link's supposed to be X and Y and Z, and I know you're not supposed to put in that on your face. And I know Pastor and Sister Lambert want us to live holy, but it's okay. We can go to church, and we can worship. And matter of fact, we can go to the altar, but you don't have to live that way, Mama. You're just Hazar. You're just Hazar. You're just living with walls without gates. Let me tell every individual in this place today. I'm preaching the word of the Lord and I'm not trying to be hard to anybody. I'm not trying to be rough with anybody, but I understand the times that we are living in and I understand what's going on outside of this church right now and it's not the time to have walls without gates. You know, parents, there are choirs that are looking for your baby boys. You know, moms and dads, there's choirs that are looking to make your baby boys uh, like other boys. You know, there are spirits working in this world uh, that want to make your daughters like other girls. I'm just going to preach against it. You know that there are people in this world that are trying to tell you it's okay uh, for a 12-year-old girl uh, to hook up with a man uh, that's well over the age of 18. You know there's people in this world that say it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. You can do whatever you want. Whoever you want to be attracted to, you can attract them. It's your body. You just be attracted to them. That's the way you were born. You know, there's a world uh, that they want to destroy uh, the purity of these young people. uh, And they want you. How old are you? They say that 17's too young uh, to not already lose his virginity. They say that Sam right here uh, is too young to live this way. Uh, Hey, that he needs to go ahead uh, and do things that Sam has no business doing right now uh, because uh, they want you to be walls. uh, They want you to be Sundays uh, without gates. uh, Matt, when that baby boy comes, uh, there's got to be gates. (laughs) 
Almost is not enough. Almost isn't going to cover it. Almost isn't going to get us there. Come on, lift your hands and begin to pray in the spirit right now. If you don't agree, I'm sorry, but you're not saved. If you're not following, why don't you get the Holy Ghost right now? I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to be real. Yeah, go ahead, hang the gates. Go ahead, hang the gates. Your shatayada bokie. Come on. Come on, Dad. I would stand up right now and I'd say I've lived so long huh, with just walls in my world. Huh? I've lived as his are. Huh? I've built pretty walls. Huh? Come on, Father. I'd stand up right now. Come on, Mom, I'd stand up and lift my hands and say my family's no longer going to be a Sunday without gates. I'm no longer going to pick and choose what pastor preaches anymore. Come on, hang the gates. Come on, hang the gates. Your chateau, your double We don't have time to live unholy anymore. Come on, young guys, you pray together. Why don't you hang the gates together? Come on, young girls, put your put your hand on your friend right now. I'm so tired of seeing Sundays without gates. It hurts me to watch young people walk away from church because gates weren't in their world. Oh, hang the gates. Hang the gates. Yo shut on your double Yo shut your da 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 Yo shut on your da 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 Come on, young people, your parents need your help. I'm going to live within these walls. Pastor, I don't want to live without these walls. Hang the gates. Come on, Alyssa, what was your son's name? Oakland. Oakland. Oakland needs gates. I'm going to pray with you right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for gates, God. I pray, God, for gates that would never fail. Come on, there's a family that stands in the balance right now. Come on, Brother McDonald. Come on, Brother McDonald. I need gates. Come on, Virginia. Come on, what better thing to do on your birthday than to hang some gates on the walls? Hang the gates. 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 Come on, Brother Bruce. That's the way to go, sir. If you're not praying with somebody, make your way down to this altar right now and say, I'm not going another day. 
I'm not going another day without gates on my walls. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, every mom, every dad in this place. Yeah, if you're not already praying with somebody, I'd urge you to run down to this altar. I've done such a good job uh, to build the walls. Uh, well, buddy, that's not good enough anymore. Uh, I've done such a good job to build the best walls. Well, brother, that's not enough anymore. Hang the gates. Come on, don't leave this place saying almost. I hung the gates. Almost I saved my family. Almost I kept my son from living unholy. Come on. Young people, if you get done praying, make your way down to this altar. Come on, we need everybody in this place to hang the gates. Come on, young people. There's going to come a time in your life where your parents' gates aren't good enough for you. Come on, Caleb. Come on, Levi. Come on, Riley. Come on, that's it. We got people moving. That's it, Sister Allie. Pray over him. Declare it in his world. In the name of Jesus. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied with just having walls anymore. I'm not satisfied with being almost anymore. But I would to God that I'd be almost and all together. Come on, I know that there's prayer being made here and there, and that's wonderful. But I just ask that everyone in this place, if you want holiness in your family, if you want holiness in your world, that's awesome. Caleb, come down to this altar right now. Don't say this is just a message for the young people or this is just a message for people with children. Come on, if you want God to truly use your family, if you want God to truly use you right now, make your way down to this altar and put some gates on your walls. Put some gates on your walls. Put some gates on your walls. I'm not going to live like his are anymore. I'm not going to have these beautiful walls. I'm not going to be a Sunday without gates. Come on, what will you leave this place saying today? Almost I hung the gates and almost I lived holy. Or will you walk out of this church this Sunday morning and say, not just me, 
But my family and my house were hanging gates, not just almost, but all together, but all together. Come on, Sister Christy. Hang the gate, Sister Christy. Come on, hang the gates, Alyssa. Come on, Virginia, hang the gates. I can't afford to leave this service until I know the gates are put in place. Let your presence yes, be yes, peace. Hang the gates. Hang the gates. Surround me, oh Lord. Surround me, oh Lord. Let your presence fill this place. Surround Hang the gates. Come on, Brother Ryan. Come on, Brother Ryan. There's a youth pastor today, young people. It's pushing for you, but you gotta hang the gates. Brother Jesse, help him hang those gates. Let your presence be Surround me. Hallelujah. Real quick, I know that people are praying in this place, and I just feel I feel led to, to, to share something for just a moment. I tell you what, real quick, everybody in this place, can you come up to the front? If you truly want to make it to heaven, you truly want God, and you truly want a relationship with him, would you make your way up to the front? It's all right. We can do men on one side, women on one, so that we're all together, and it's appropriate. This, uh, this sermon, this, this message from the Lord today hits a little different with me. You see, God blessed me when I started coming to the church. I had the best walls. I had the best example that you could ever have on how to build the walls and how to hang the gates. And as a young man, I followed that example. And as a young man, I built walls in my world and I even hung gates. But at some point in my life, it just didn't get about the gates anymore. 
At some point in my life, I got okay with saying, I can, I can take that part, and I can take that. And matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll leave those walls in place. But there's some things that I want in that those gates are keeping out. And there's some things that are in the house that I want out, and those gates are keeping them in. And so I decided that I'm going to tear down the gates. And I walked away from the Lord. And I would tell every young person in this place, though I stand here today and declare the word of the Lord, I would pray that not one person follows those same footsteps. And though I had time enough to make it back to the house of God, I would not advise you to test out your luck and see if you can make it time in the world and get back in the house of God. This world wants to destroy you. I can't say it loud enough that this world wants to destroy you. Young people, if they don't respect the, your boundaries, they want to destroy you. But, but, I, but I let go of those gates. Come here, Brother Cody. Brother Caleb. Let's go to Caleb. Caleb. Whereas I let go of gates in my world, and I had a long, hard road that I had to face because of it. Young people, you hear me right now because there's going to be people that you watch walk away from God. Uh, there's going to be friends that you see slip away. But thank God. Thank God that there was somebody that was still willing to keep gates in their world even when their friends didn't have gates. He's shot Oh, thank God that there were parents and there was a pastor, a pastor's wife in a church that kept gates in their world because I couldn't imagine trying to leave this old world to come back to the house and finding a place of ruin without gates. Come on, there's backsliders. There's backsliders that are getting ready to come into this house and you know what they're looking for? There's people that's about to walk back and they're looking for somebody that still has gates. I know you've prayed and I'm so thankful you have. But I ask you one more time. Can you lift your hands right now in this altar as a church body together and say, I'm not leaving this service. I'm not leaving this sanctuary until the gates are hung. Come on, Mom. Come on, Dad. Oh, you leave your hands lifted for just another moment because there's somebody in this place, huh? and you hear the Holy Ghost this morning. There's somebody in this place today that got offended, and because you got offended, huh, you didn't hang gaze, huh? and your children huh, could die lost today huh, if you don't hang. Yeah, shut taught up a high sata. I wish you would lay your hand on your neighbor and let us work in that unity one more time. Lay your hand on your brother, on your sister, husband to wife, father to children, mother to children, whatever it takes. Find you somebody close to you again. You don't know why. I'm not going to let you live without Kate's. Come on, pray for somebody as if you're too important to me for you to live without gates. You're too important to the kingdom of God to live without gates. Come on, fight for them right now. You're too important. You're too important. God's got too much for you to live for you to live without gates. Uh, 
Hang the gates. Hang the gates. Come on, lift your voice right now and talk to God. Come on, lift your voice right now and talk to God across this house. Lift your voice right now and talk to God across this house. God's touching the hearts in this place. Come on, God's touching hearts in this place right now. of the Holy Ghost in this room right now. So my question today Do you know what gates do? They control what comes in. And they control what goes out. I can dress the part. Sometimes gates say no. And sometimes gates say yes. Open gates say yes. Closed gates say no. Somebody needs to close the gates and tell the devil no. You're not going to have access to my family. You're not going to have access to my church. You're not going to have access to my mind or my spirit. Today I'm closing the gates. I'm keeping the good in. And I'm keeping the bad. Hallelujah. Young people, when your parents put limitations on your access, they're not mad at you, they're not trying to do you a disservice. They're trying to put a gate, a control point that disallows the adversary. They'll put little things in your spirit that will steal, kill, and destroy you. We need some real parents, Brother Embry, that'll put control factors in their world. You're not their friend. I think I'm going to say that again. You're not their friend. You are their parent. One more time, would you lift your hands and tell God, God, if there are gates in my world that need to be closed,
If I'm allowing little things to speak in, for heaven's sake, if I'm allowing little things to sneak in, help me, Lord, to highlight and to shut the gates. Hallelujah. How many of you love the Lord today? Well, I got four right here. How many of you love the Lord today? How many of you made your mind up? I'm not going to be Sundays without gates. Thank you, Brother Scroggins, for delivering the word of the Lord today. Wow, what a word. As you make your way back to your seat, shake hands on four or five, six, seven, ten, twenty-five, fifty, whatever. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord, and thank you for your response today. God has touched greatly and spoken directly to individuals on this Sunday morning. and We are thankful for a God that looks beyond where we are. Praise the name of the Lord. With that, uh, we have a couple of things we're going to take care of today. And again, along with uh, Brother Jesse, I do want to say happy birthday, Sister Dosha. Uh, Sister Dosha Sister is coming. Uh, but to Sister Virginia, and we are so proud that she is doing so good. And happy birthday to you this morning. God bless you, Sister Dosha. We had Landon Smith had a birthday, which I don't think he's here. And then we had Brother Scroggins had a birthday. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. And then, of course, today is Sister Virginia Scroggins' birthday. Yeah, there he is. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little discombobbled. <laughs> Happy birthday. Brother Cody's coming right now. He's got a quick announcement. Amen. So I am not here to ask you for your money. I'm here to give you an opportunity to give. Uh, it's that time of year again for Christmas for Christ. Um, just a couple things that this covers. Um, it, it helps with uh, church growth or church starters, church planners. Uh, just a few cities, and I'm, I'm going to read these off quickly, but I don't know everybody's family in here, but I'm sure some of you have family in these cities that, that church planters are at. Uh, Brooklyn, and this is all in Mississippi, Clinton, Diamond Head, Eupora, Flowood, Gloucester, Hernando, Indianola, Jackson, Oklahoma, Past Christian, Philadelphia, Prentice, Raymond, Saltilla, South Haven, these are target cities that don't, those are, those are places where church planters are and they've got churches started. These are target cities where they're trying to get uh, funds and get the stuff that they need to get a, a, a plant there. Central Jackson, Rolling Fork, Delisle, Ashland, Fayette, Moss Point, Horn Lake, Kiln, Success, that'll be a good one, Mantachi, Winona, Dido, maybe, Long Beach, and Lizana. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that this goes towards is church plants and uh, home missions churches in Mississippi. Uh, another thing it goes to is Spanish evangelism ministry rallies, Spanish evangelism conferences, uh, deaf evangelism conferences, building the bridge conference, Christian prisoner ministries, and parchment crusades. Uh, and then it goes to the district of, of Mississippi to go to the different church plants. Uh, those things take money. Uh, I cannot remember the gentleman's name that was speaking at uh, the church growth seminar, but he was the shorter guy with the glasses. But he was talking about he was he was at a church plant and uh, they were trying to get everything ready to start the church. They got the church started, and every service the same guy would come in and he would see, be like, you know, we need this, we need that. He would, he would ask for more toilet paper in the bathroom. Even though they had plenty, they had plenty of safety stock. They used one, so he wanted to get it replaced. And uh, they were working in the church one day, and he said, you know, Pastor, I think we need to go buy this. And he said, where do you think this money's coming from? I've only got a few people here. We can't just be buying a lot of stuff. So these offerings go towards helping these churches get funded and get started and reaching family members, friends, uh, friends of family members in, in places that don't have churches. Some places do have churches, but they're wanting to go to a different part of the city. The city's so big. 
they're wanting to get them started on a different in a different area. I've took the biggest one, so you don't have to take it, okay? Uh, but these numbers or these envelopes are labeled from one dollar all the way to ninety nine dollars. We have uh, more that are higher than that. Uh, get with Sister Lambert or Sister Chastity. If you would, on your way out today, stop by and grab an envelope. If we get all of these uh, filled, if somebody grabs it, if everyone would grab an envelope and we fill those up, it would it would provide five thousand and fifty dollars to the District of Mississippi to give to these church growths and church planters. Uh, this also sends these church planters to any district functions, any general conference, anything like that, so that they can get refreshed because. I can only imagine how it would be if you've quit your job and you've moved to a city to plant a church. You don't know anybody. You are the pastor there. You are constantly giving and giving and giving. This provides their family a way to go and receive and, and be blessed. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much. If you would, grab an envelope. Um, grab a couple if you want to, but thank y'all. Offerings due December 19th. Sorry, I meant to hit that. forgot. <laughs> thank y'all. Amen. You'll be tremendously blessed by that. Uh, and I'm just going to do the announcements real quick. Uh, and then as you leave, you can make your way up here. And I encourage you to grab a, an envelope. Uh, tonight, uh, everybody say tonight, we have church at uh, prayer starts at what time? 515 in the prayer room downstairs in Fellowship Hall. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll be uh, having a move of God. It'll transition. Uh, into the sanctuary at 6. Uh, tomorrow night is prayer meeting, and that starts. We also have church on Monday nights. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock p.m. We encourage anybody, if you're available, uh, you can come. I understand some have to work, some get off work late. But if you can make it here on Monday night, you want to be here to help cultivate an atmosphere uh, for revival and growth. November the 28th uh, is our church-wide Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and that is going to be um, a lot of fun. You're going to, you know, if you like to eat. I don't know how many of you came to our fall festival, uh, but we had we had a blast of a time, had a lot of food, had a lot of fellowship, uh, and you're going to enjoy. This is going to be somewhat similar, uh, but it's, it's going to be for the whole church, and uh, they'll be making some more announcements about that uh, as it gets closer. Uh, please remember... Uh, that the coffee shop will be open immediately after service this morning. Uh, they were they were uptown yesterday, did a wonderful job, uh, and the coffee is really good. So if you want some good coffee, uh, go down there, check it out. Also, if you're a coffee, uh, if you work for the coffee shop here at the church, uh, Sister Amber has requested that we have, they, they're going to have a meeting downstairs in the fellowship hall immediately after church. So if you help in any way, if you work, in, on any Sunday or any event, uh, please make your way down there as soon as you can after service uh, so that uh, you can get a, be a part of that meeting. Uh, with all that being said, uh, please find somebody. Let them know that we missed them this morning if they wasn't here. Uh, remember, the, the Christmas for Christ cards up here. Uh, come grab you one and fill it out and bring it back. Uh, but let's come back tonight and expect in a move of God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. If you need to go ahead and turn yours in, if we could get an offering plate up here with